This is Tyrese Halliburton, and he is a 42% three-point shooter in the NCAA. This year, he is in the 2020 NBA Draft, and he is starting to look like he's going to be one of the top 10 to top 12 NBA Draft picks. Let's get down and let's check out how Tyrese Halliburton is able to shoot the three-point shot. So this is Tyrese Halliburton in one of the NBA camps that they are holding so that they can evaluate different basketball players. And this is from one of his scouting tapes. Now from there, what we are looking at is his feet at first. And his feet are both not pointing towards the rim. They are both pointing off towards the left side of his body. Next, we're going to be looking at his knees. His knees are also looking and pointing towards the left side of his body. And the same goes for his hips as well as his shoulders. Now really quickly, if you're trying to figure out why I am pointing this out, usually for a straight, accurate, consistent shot, what you're going to be looking to have is to be having both of your feet pointed towards the rim, your hips, knees, and shoulders are all square towards the basket, and of course roughly the same distance from the rim. However, some players don't shoot like that, so at this point in time, I would be looking at Tyrese Halliburton's shot and seeing if he's going to be making any differences with the rest of his shot to be able to get around the fact that he is not square towards the rim. Now when he gets, catches that ball to go up for his shot, most players will dip the ball down to their hips or the side of their body at the hip height, but ha Tyrese Halliburton does not do this. Tyrese also doesn't do this in-game either all that often, only maybe 1% of the time he actually dips the ball down. So this can actually really mess up your shot when it comes even farther up because now you're not lining up your shot and keeping your body straight in line with the basket. However, again, remembering that he is a 42% three-point shooter and there must be a reason why that is. So when he lifts that ball up, his, he's a right-handed shooter, but his right hand is on the right side of the ball. It's not underneath or behind the ball. So right now, I would be assuming that he would be missing a lot of his shots towards the left side. Now when he goes up with his shot, he actually does not shoot with a thumb. And now his elbow is in line with his shoulder, which is in line with the basket. So this is what's going to help him drastically with the accuracy and consistency with his shot. He also has the elbow perfectly, almost perfectly, underneath that ball. So now even though his hand's on the right side of the ball, he by the time he shoots the ball, he's going to be having his hand behind the ball, if not under the ball, and then he's able to flick that ball. It kind of looks like it goes off the middle finger right there. And then after he flicks, he then shifts his left or his right hand over towards his left hand. What is really good is the fact that his off hand does not affect that shot at all. Now again, it kind of looks like he may have a thumb on that ball, but from this footage, it doesn't look like there's anything there. So that's not affecting anything. He's able to flick straight forward and then his arm goes out towards the left side. And then he brings his follow through down almost instantly. But he does finish after releasing with the elbow above the eyes, which is going to give him a good amount of arc. So now we have him coming off of a dribble handoff. And what we're going to see here is when he catches that ball at shoulder height, he catches it on his left foot. Then he goes right left up into his shot. Now when we look at his elbow and his shoulder, he actually has no hinge on his elbow, it's all hinged from his shoulder. So even though he has a lot of moving parts when it comes to where his hands sit on the ball, where he releases that ball, and also how his shoulders and knees are not necessarily lined up with the basket unless and his feet are actually look like they're pointing towards the rim in this case off of a dribble handoff. So he has a few different foot placements when it comes to shooting. 
But the less movement, the better. And the fact that he only moves his shoulder and not his elbow when he lifts that ball up is very good. And the reason why he has a fast release, and you may be wondering why he's able to get the shot over top of so many defenders in the NCAA, it's because of where he has his elbow. So there's multiple different types of players. There's the players who will shoot with a perfect 90 degree angle, and I'm usually like that type of player. Some players will have their arm all the way down, and then there's other players who have their arm right in the middle, roughly 45 degrees, if not a little bit higher than 45 degrees. Anything from here to here is going to be a quick release, and that's going to allow you to shoot over top of a lot of different players. So he has only one hinge, nothing on his elbow, which is good. His set point is roughly right here, which is roughly in front of his right eye, if not just slightly above in front of his forehead. And then from there, when he releases that ball, he does drift a little bit forwards, which does get him a little bit more power on his shot. Usually when players shoot with the ball on the with the hand on the right side of the ball and then they fit it underneath the ball when they go up for the shot, they usually do drift forward because they do need more power for that ball. And then he keeps his eye on the basket and on the ball. This is, of course, just a practice, but in-game this is very beneficial because now he can figure out, hey, actually, I'm going to miss this shot. I need to go in for my offensive rebound. And now coming from this angle, from the left side, cutting right off of a dribble handoff, he kicks that right foot down. And as we can see, he also keeps no movement in that elbow until he gets it up to his set point, but look at where his set point is, 90 degrees. That is going to give him a super fast release. And by just analyzing this tape alone, if I was a player trying to defend him, what I would know right away is I need to be on him fast if he's coming from the left side of the court. Meanwhile, from the right side of the court, what we've seen earlier, coming from the right side of the court, he actually has a little bit more of a 9, uh, 45 degree angle on his shot. So it's not going to be as fast of a release coming from this angle. Meanwhile, if he was coming from the left side, that would mean that he's going to have a faster release and I need to be on him faster. If you have enjoyed today's video, hit that like button and subscribe. Up in this corner is a subscribe button and over here is another video that YouTube thinks that you're going to like. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video.